watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. We have a very special guest with us today. You know, there is a crisis in our country, in San Diego, but all over, in cities all over the country, uh, the homelessness crisis. And we've talked about it on the show a little bit. We had former Mayor Faulkner here in studio a few weeks ago talking about how cities are, are approaching this. And um, I have believed for a long time that it needs to be a holistic approach and not just taking tents away and making people go to a certain place and then forgetting about them five days, 10 days later. It needs to start at the root cause of why why they're even there in the first place. Um, so we have a very special guest. Her name is Laura Chez. She is the executive director and founder of We See You San Diego, which I love the name. Hi. So welcome to America Trends, Laura. Thank Laura you, Chez. Mary. I'm so honored to be with you. I'm really happy you're here. Yes. Uh, one of our producers helped us find you, and I just love that you're here because I was reading all about you and your story mm. and what you're doing for the city of San Diego this homeless cr homelessness crisis and helping people be seen yeah which yeah. is just it's kind of a buzz phrase maybe now mm -hmm. but it's real no it's real <laughs> and it's definitely a key part of being able to help somebody yes seeing them yep yeah. and and having them feel seen it's in order to want to make a step to make change right exactly exactly so before we dive into all of that, sure. I'd love to hear how you ended up. I read a little bit in a line, and I just love the story of how you ended up here in San Diego and in this work. Yeah. you're not from here. Not from here. I'm actually from New York. I was okay. in Queens. Um, I was on a treadmill one day at the uh -huh. gym listening to a podcast uh -huh. about homelessness. Mm. I had never worked with people that were homeless before. And as I was listening to it, tears started streaming down my face. Like, it probably looked like a really intense workout. Uh -huh. I wound up leaving the gym because I didn't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> And I went. You home. and I will get along yeah. great. Right. I think that's happened to me a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I felt the pierce in my heart mm -hmm. that I, I was going to be involved in some way. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, um, my family and I had an opportunity to move to San Diego. But the first thing I looked up was the crisis. I knew a little bit about the crisis in Manhattan, where I, I was surrounded by sure. homelessness there. But when I saw the level of crisis in San Diego, I thought. Okay, well, that that little seed that's in my heart, maybe it's to go there and do something. Mm. So that's really what it started like as an idea. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what it was going to look like. And when my family and I moved to San Diego, one of the first things we did, just trying to plug ourselves into this, we moved across the nation. We needed to find community quick. So yeah. we checked out some churches in the area. And at one, we were there just checking it out. And we heard they do a, a little dinner for people that live on the streets. And I told my husband, you should go to that because I'm gonna work with the homeless <laughs> and I didn't know anything Mary knew okay. nothing he went and on that night the people that were hosting this dinner with only about eight to ten people as guests wasn't it just like a pizza dinner or something pizza yeah. and soda yeah. they were moving to Northern California and needed someone to take over and they asked my husband would you and your family do this and he gave my husband the key to the church what yeah yeah. I love these divine appointments. It was. Stories, right? It, it was. Just meant to be. Serendipity. It was. Yeah. So when he came home, I said, how was that dinner? Was it dangerous? <laughs> and he's like, no, weirdo. No. <laughs> yeah. And we're in charge of it. And he NPS, said, yes, yeah. yeah, NPS. And he said, but what I think we should do is cook what we would eat at home with the kids. I love that. And so that was his idea. And then, by we, did he mean you? Cook? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> like, I was like, get to the real no, Mary, I was a horrible cook at the okay. time. I've become a good cook through what we're doing at We oh, See cool. You. But he started the crock pots. Oh, yeah. and the rice and the Genius. salad so he started it and then we all just went the next week mm -hmm. and I love people so I sat right down at the picnic table and just started talking to people I love it and uh it's grown from there so where were, where did yeah. you host it it was at a church called Resolved. It was okay. in the Morena uh -huh. district, close to Mission Valley. It is yeah. actually adjacent to where the Mission Valley YMCA is. Uh -huh. um, I would just call it Central San Diego. Yes. Um, it's it's about it's 10 minutes from downtown, but it's right there, alongside the riverbed of San Diego, right. okay. where there's a crisis of its own. And how did you know you get because then it started with eight people and now what is it up oh to? my goodness some nights depends it depends on the night but it could be a hundred it could be 150 sometimes there's 250 people no wow. RSVPs when you're working with people who live on the streets of San Diego right. who don't yeah. have uh Evite <laughs> at their paperless post. Right. They, yeah. They don't they, respond, they don't to, respond that. to that. No. 
So, gosh, so many questions. Yeah. Now, how, I mean, I love the concept yeah. of having the crock pot, having the, yeah. what we would eat at home. Right. Having, because that brings a level of humanity to oh it. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And then you're obviously an engaging person. I'm sure your family is as well. So getting down there, sitting at the picnic table, and then getting to know who these yeah. people are. Now, were, was there moments of this is scary or something is threatening or maybe we need to adjust how we do this or did you have people show up that you know you felt really comfortable and it was all good it's really it, it's it's an interesting question it's a really good question but i have never felt afraid and i think this the reason why is because when you treat people with dignity respect honor and love mm -hmm. they meet you there yeah so that's what i found and it's not a it's not a secret it's just like no when when you treat me with respect it's like oh thank you for respecting me i'm gonna respect you too yeah and so it was that and just that knowing like we're there to be love um uh -huh. so sitting down all of a sudden like trust started being built but it was that consistency week after week so i never felt fear because no one was doing anything threatening they're coming to eat dinner yeah and Sit, oh, you want to hear my name? You want to look at me in the eyes? And um, I, I think like a wall started coming down over time. Mm -hmm. At first, n no one trusts you and they'll just be in and out with no conversation. Uh -huh. But over, over time, time, so we lead with a relationship first approach. That's what I was going to yeah. ask you about because so then from this, you mm -hmm. started We See You San Diego. Is that how exactly. it was born, right? I didn't come out here to start a nonprofit. Uh -huh. We saw a need uh -huh. and a very specific one because what I learned through people sharing their stories and um, getting to kind of understand the landscape a little bit more um, is that there is a massive drug problem that people that are living on the streets and I'm talking about chronically homeless not situationally homeless it's, uh -huh. it is different um, the unsheltered population we see entrenched in drug addiction yep. today looks different than it did when we started six years ago we saw a lot of methamphetamine back then uh -huh. we saw um, we would always see alcohol, alcohol and stuff like that we would see heroin uh -huh. and opioids today we see fentanyl, fentanyl. yeah we still give me chills. I know it's it's yeah. it's scary we see fentanyl. Yeah, and uh, and and everything's laced with fentanyl, right? So we see people now with another level of hopelessness too because mm -hmm. once you're on fentanyl it feels like a prison it feels like you're covered in chains it feels like a death yeah. sentence well i will say even alcoholism because oh, i am sure. in recovery yes and i that was one of the biggest things that i how i would uh, articulate it oh. was that i felt chained to a bottle or something yes. and it was like i was a, i was a functional person you yeah. know i came to work every day and had my kids and my family but still there was this inner side of me that I was able to get help for. Yes. It was available to me. I had lucky wow. situation that I was able to get that help. Mm -hmm. But there are people that don't necessarily have the help readily available to them. Right. So I love that this is that approach because that is the bottom line. People need to get help from their addiction. You can't just take their tent away no. and say, oh, it's fixed, no. right? You cannot, you cannot. And we've found some broken pieces in the system where it's, I mean, it feels almost impossible yeah. for people. So we're gonna um, talk about that. Yeah. Actually, we have to take a quick break. Sure. And this is, I feel like we could do a whole show with you. This is amazing yeah. what you're doing. Um, we've got Laura Ches here. She is the founder of We See You San Diego. And we'll be right back after this quick break. Thanks.